Welcome to Frames TM. Today we will talk about why I think the Nikon ZF is a camera that other manufacturers should model their tiny compact retro styled cameras on. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and help the channel grow to 6,000 subscribers. If you like this content, then let me know what you think about the opinions placed here and like the video. If you feel kind, then help me out with a super thanks tip. Now, I'll just tell you about why I think this is a model camera. Okay, so before I talk about this ZF camera, I think the story should um, this story should be started with the Nikon ZFC. See, about three years back, Nikon first launched the ZFC. It was a tentative launch. They launched the ZFC to understand the kind of response it gets and possibly to also learn from the experience of launching a, a camera like that uh, in early 2020s. Fuji was doing great. Sony had launched the A7C. No one else was doing anything like that. So the ZFC for me was a pass because it is a crop sensor camera. I honestly wanted, I already had an X-T3. If anything, I wanted a full frame version of the X-T3, uh, not another crop sensor version, which is not like the X-T3. So for me, the ZFC was halfway uh, there. It is not a fully properly made retro style camera that I would like to buy and use. I was very excited to see what Sony did with the A7C. But then I was planning to buy the A7 IV and, th and I thought that the A7 IV was a much better camera than the A7C. It was fundamentally a, a body change on the A7 III. And that was why I did not go for the A7C, but I always liked how the camera felt, how the camera looked. And I liked the fact that the internet was, users were actually excited about the A7C. That was very positive for me. X100V was doing great. And then finally, we know when the X106 was launched, it just, I think, sold a million copies already, meaning that Fuji got more than a million bookings for that camera. And today at this time, everyone is waking, and ZF is selling very well. Today at this point, everyone is waking up to this kind of, this format of cameras. So Lumix is working on S9. It's probably going to launch very soon. Possibly Canon is working on something like that. Fuji is trying to figure out how to replicate the success from uh, X100 series, what to do with the XC line, whether sh they should come out with an XC5 or not. Because even the XC4 was good, but it wasn't... I owned the XC4, but then the XC4 wasn't as good of as good in build quality as I would have liked it to be. I think these cameras also need to be well built. I'll, and I'll cover all of these implications, all of these aspects to the story in this video. So that's where the story started, right? And over, over the next few years and months, Nikon actually launched this lens, the 40 f2. That was the first lens that, that they launched in terms of compact, affordable, tiny light lens. Then they uh, actually went ahead and launched the 28 2.8 and then came the 26, I think 2.8. I've never used the 26 2.8. Uh, the 40 and the 28 have um, uh, plastic bayonet these are plastic bayonet lenses let me show you you don't have a metal mount or bayonet here the 26 has a metal bayonet and it's a bit it's a bit more um, costly it's a bit costlier than the 40 and the 28 if you look at how Nikon looked at this whole package that's very interesting they added the IBIS not only did they add the IBIS they added an IBIS that's better than the Z8s okay it's very close or even better than the Z9's IBIS. The only problem is because of the size and because of the flat nature of this body, they had to space manage and therefore, because look, the battery is slot goes in like this. Let me show you. The In other DSLR bodies, this is how the battery goes in, right? So you have this area left to put in some internal stuff. But in this body, because it's a flat body, the battery has to go in like this. So it's a take, it's, it's taking a bit more space this way. So there's a bit of limitation in terms of how much space you have inside. Despite that, they put in the IBIS, but they just couldn't put a lock in, uh, locking mechanism for the IBIS. A lot of Sony and Canon bodies, R5, R6, they have a traditional DSLR style body, but they still don't have an IBIS lock. The Z bodies always had it. It's only the ZF where they made an exception. 
that but they added but they added the ibis they have given let's look at the shutter speed they have given 1/8000 of a second shutter speed so full speed right a normal professional quality shutter is what you get inside the match the sound beautiful absolutely mechanical classic sounding clicks okay what else is going on the viewfinder is not compromised it's a fully featured viewfinder just like on your Z6 or Z9 very bright large and it's got uh the the ipc here is actually round it's not squared so it feels even better when you're shooting like this because it's just it's much more comfortable for your eye when you're shooting like this is the touch is much more comfortable what else is going on they've added a pasm dial a lot of pasm i mean you have this liver here a lot of people said ah fuji has this auto setting on on iso on shutter and on the lens is just that you have to change three things to get to aperture priority or to shutter priority here you just move to a if you want aperture priority or you move to s if you want shutter priority it's just simple it's not complicated it's one push and you are there which means when you want to quickly change settings you can do that here if you want to quickly shoot almost like a professional with this body you can do that this can be your hobby camera this can be your professional camera if you want it to they have in many markets they have actually given this grip free of cost i mean it's of course they have costed for it but it comes with uh, the cost of the camera so i have gotten this grip the small rig grip along with couple of cards high speed cards v90 cards and v v60 cards v60 micro sd and v90 uh, full sized um, sd what else is going on the body is absolutely well made there is no compromise in the quality of the build of this body it feels beautifully sturdy and well made what else it doesn't have only an in electronic front curtain shutter it's got dual shutter like a proper camera it's got two shutter curtains it's just not like the sony a7c's will have a single shutter curtain falling and the rest of the stuff is being managed by the sensor and you have uh, that's called electronic front curtain shutter and it has compromises in how the bokeh appears often times so you don't have any such compromise on the zf okay the battery like i said is full sized it's not a smaller battery that kind of compromises on the performance none of that high burst shooting speed is not capped it's 14 14 frames per second the sensor is worked up on further to give you higher iso it's now highest iso is at 60000 look when they when nikon looked at this camera also by the way you can actually see the f number on this tiny you know window here the f number is shown there you can just quick have a quick read of uh, of your f number on this tiny screen which i quite like i mean you they're doing a bit more to give you a bit more information just when you look at it you have that information in front of you not only this they introduced new technologies that they have not introduced on any other body for example they have they added a few new recipes uh, or let's say simulations just picture profiles they added a new black and white mode you just can you can just flick the switch and get to black and white mode and then within there you have three different black and white profiles to choose from and you can just move to black and white instantly that's something that they did for the first time the ibis is so advanced that the sensor moves around the focal the point of focus the ibis system is not anchored to the center of the frame but wherever you're focusing so your focus point is where the shake is minimized the highest so it's a more it's a more intelligent way of stabilizing um the shot they have done that they have introduced that kind of technology in this camera first which is not supposed to be a professional grade camera right but it is look at the kind of detail they have gotten into they have added brass the top dials are made of brass so when the the color comes off and a lot of people actually now are just just brushing it and trying to artificially bring the color out br the brass out i find that so sad to see because the whole point 
of doing that is for the camera to speak its age. Like every time a little bit of this black paint is off, is taken off, there is a memory associated. You know, you used it for six months and then this happened or two years and this happened. It is supposed to age gracefully. That's why you, I mean, it, it's just no fun when you artificially just, 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 just brush it off. It doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, it is so thoughtful of Nikon to, to have done, done that. A lot of people talk about, uh, you know, um, uh, the ISO being a problem, the auto ISO setting being a problem. It's actually quite simple. There are videos on it and I will tell you the correct way to set out auto ISO uh, in a later video. In fact, initial days, I was also quite confused. But um, but then I think it's a communication issue from Nikon. I think the camera and the system has no problem at all. You just need to know how to use it. I'll talk about that in a video that comes up. But the next video is going to be XT5 versus ZF rematch. Look, the point I'm making is that you almost see no compromise or wherever you see a little bit of compromise, they could have not given us that feature and played safe. They have chosen to give the IBIS, but they could not give the IBIS lock. They could have not give us two, given us two SD card slots, but they have chosen to give us that. It's just the one SD card slot is a micro SD card slot slot it is much less controversial to not give you those uh, benefits of the ibis or two card slots but, of, but hey you have it you have them there are some limitations because of the form factor that's all but apart from the, that the intent is right now nikon does not have a camera that has a flip forward screen and a lot of people when they looked at this camera said this camera is not for video why do you have you given it a flip forward screen but understand this is also a beautiful camera, a lifestyle camera for a lot of people who are not professionals. They're going to use it for pleasure, for travel, for having fun. They're not going to buy another camera which has a flip out screen. That'd be cruel for them to ask them to have two cameras. Hey, one camera is for fun and travel, a camera that you love using because it's beautiful to look at, beautiful to carry. But then if you want to video yourself, you need to buy another camera that's got a flip forward screen. That makes no sense. It's much better to ask that of professionals who are making money out of selling photography and videography services, isn't it? And they will have more than one bodies. So I think it makes sense that Nikon added this because they don't have a whole series, like Fuji has a whole series of XT lineup. Now you can still buy the XT4 and it's got a flip out screen. You can buy the XT5, which doesn't have an, uh, a flip out screen. You can go for the XT50 and, and you have options there, right? Nikon obviously is not going to fill up the line with cameras like this. There'll probably be a Z5, a ZF Mark II three years from now. For now, this is so well thought out because if you're actually a classic film camera shooter, you're likely to use the viewfinder. The point to notice the viewfinder is, is absolutely gorgeous without compromise. And when you are shooting uh, horizontal or when you're shooting vertically, this is very easy to take it out like this and look like this and shoot. Okay. It's only when you're shooting low angle, but horizontally that you actually, that you actually flip it out that you actually have to flip it out and look at it like this when um, the alignment of what you see here and where the subject is may not match and it can get a little messy up here at times when you keep shooting it for some time. I know my wife faces a little bit of dizziness when she does that. Uh, that can happen for some people. Okay. But that's a very, very, that's a very small case scenario, but you open up much more usage for people who want to shoot themselves and see themselves on the screen. Just by adding this, it increases the usability, right? But it does take away shooting of a certain type of shot, which is low angle, when you shoot looking straight horizon, it's just one type of shooting scenario where there's a bit of a compromise. It's clear that Econ is not going to make many of these bodies, which is why they had to go for this kind of compromise. But the intent comes across to us. We understand what Nikon is trying to do. They're not trying to give you a camera that looks nice, feels great, photos are nice, but then give you the pleasure of owning something this at the cost you would not at the cost of you not having many of the professional features and full features things like the R8 does, has a tiny camera. I mean, yeah, it's a tiny camera with a very tiny battery, right? Again, it doesn't have uh, 
a proper full shutter it's got a half shutter i mean it has a single shutter curtain it doesn't have double shutter curtains like a proper camera with proper mechanical shutters should have so and it doesn't have ibis now panasonic is, is talking about launching the s9 look at it i mean it's such a great idea it doesn't have a viewfinder the a7c viewfinder is a tiny look everyone understand the intention of why they are small or why the viewfinder is off the whole point and the challenge is to give you all those benefits while keeping the shape and the design exquisite like this friendly stylish life stylish like this that's the challenge and i think this therefore becomes the model camera and if anyone anyone wants to make a camera which should which wants to get the pie of the zf and uh, x100 series of camera markets i think canon sony panasonic everyone else they should look at the zf and say hey we already have a really good success story what can we do better that's the question that should be asked and that's where consumers and the community will get better stuff if you like this video subscribe if you like this conversation comment what you think and like this video if you like this video and um well if you have been coming here for some time if you like my content overall whenever you feel kind do help me out with super thanks see you with another video next